Hi guys, Mike here from KS Bushcraft Down Under. Today I thought I'd run you through, I'm just resharpening my Optinel number 8 outdoor. Now, unlike the rest of the uh, Optinels, this one has a, um, a rope cutting edge on the bottom. So, sharpening the rest of the range is really quite easy. Because it is a complete flat grind, really you can just get a, a stone and run the entire blade over it. But I didn't want to do that because of this uh, file worked edge. I've decided to put a, a chisel grind on the front part which was the only part on this blade which was dull. This was still perfectly fine. Now this knife has seen a fair bit of use. It's not really a bushcrafting knife. I'd describe it as a um, backpacking, trekking type knife. It's nice and light. It's really quite well made. It's sort of no hassles, stainless steel. I used it on my coast-to-coast uh, -coast walk across the top of the UK where I cut its way through cheese, salami, bread rolls, all really fabulous type of stuff. Now, if you've ever tackled a, uh, a French bread roll with a Victorinox 91mm or even a 93mm, you know what I'm talking about. This does a far better job. So anyway, this edge finally dulled off enough that I had to sharpen it. So I've already run through the, the core stones, putting this chisel grind on, and I'll just show you. I chose a, quite a shallow edge, which I may regret as yet. I've chose um, 20, 22, I think it is. So basically, I'm only sharpening this side, this is just polishing it off. Sorry, I chose 20 degrees. Being blind. So, what you can see here on the back side, there'll be a very slight edge there, and very slight because this is only a polishing blade. What I'll do now. I'll put it flat on the stone and take off the burr. Okay. Now that is that is sharp. So I've got a few of these Optinels. Optinels. So uh, this is the the number eight. They call this red, but it looks like orange to me. <coughs> has a plastic handle, has a whistle. The, for those that aren't familiar with them, they have a, a locking collar. So you can just cut out, not on all of them, but some of them, to lock it in place. Obviously, you open it, then turn this collar to lock it. So really, it's it's pretty simple stuff. It always reminds me of my like great granddad's knife. And um, really quite good. Now they're all they're all numbered in sizes. So this is a standard number six, meaning it's got a six centimeter blade. Now the regular one with a wooden handle is much lighter. It's only weighs in at uh, forty-five grams, whereas this one weighs in at sixty. Basically, opened nineteen centimeters, closed eleven centimeters. Sandvik 12C27 stainless, so that's pretty equivalent to a lot of the mores out there. So it, it's a good quality stainless. Yeah, now they call that a durable handle. I don't know what to call this. This is certainly durable. 110 dB whistle, and a, and a lanyard hole where this one doesn't have it. So number uh, number eight is my favourite size. I tend to pick these up at uh, at the flea market for like four dollars or five dollars. So they tend to be the knives that I put in my kitchen boxes, the one I leave in my car because I let the car broken into it too often. So they're really great value. Now this one's a bit more expensive, but the um, the rope cutting edge as they describe it. Certainly does that and that's old and crusty paracord. 
it does a great job. So let's see how I've sharpened this gun. Can't see the camera, the sun's in my face. That's not bad. Remember that I've only got a short amount of blade to play with. Let's try this one. Now the uh, outdoors is much easier to open than this one. Pretty good. So I'll play the camera will pick that up. So this chisel ground I've put on allows me to uh, field experiently basically sharpen it by taking a flat stone and drawing down the back side. So that'll make it uh, quite good. Now the outdoor one is a much thicker blade than the standard uh, number six. You can see that's quite significant. So the standard is 1.5 yeah 1.5 2.3 little is thicker at the back of the spine here so uh, quite a uh, quite a substantial little knife now said I'm quite a fan of that size now I do have a high carbon steel version that I've had for eons now this is the knife you buy if you look after your gear because of the carbon steel blade it's a much much better blade this is the big boy, this is the number 10. Actually, I think they do go up to a 12. But it's a big knife. Now, I've done things to this that I shouldn't. So there's the locking collar again. And uh, it is warm. As you can see, I can completely turn the locking collar around. Well, I can't do that. I'm going to get a third of the turn on the new ones. And still a fair bit of rocking so this wooden handle where the pin goes through has worn but I've used this to uh, baton bits of wood I did things with it that due to its size in your hand you feel like you're holding a really solid fixed blade and you tended to use it harder than you really should I mean there's the Mora Garberg alongside and as you can see it's not much in it so, I would, personally I would avoid the big boys unless you have a real reason for them because you'll tend to uh, over tweak the hinge point. Anyway, I hope you found this uh, interesting and it solves a problem for uh, resharpening uh, that particular model. Thanks for watching, bye for now.